Hello and welcome to the Gallant Few podcast. Um, this is a special edition, guys. With me tonight is our today's Shona. Shona, you are right all along. Philippe Clement, you got your man. I have indeed. I've just been wiping some Belgian chocolate off my face there, as you can see, David. So, yeah, I'm absolutely over the moon that uh, Clement's in. And I'm actually quite gutted that uh, that Scott and Curry have not been able to make it on today. Like, I, as I said, I've been taking pelters off them for about the past two weeks. So it's good that I can get my one back now. So um, I think the group chat will be full of gifts galore of Philippe Clement. So, no, really looking forward to this one, David. I think out of the two, for me, he was the best candidate out of the two. And obviously, if Graeme Souness was involved with the negotiations or the, the, the managerial talk, then I think Graeme Souness will have a better idea um, as to who we actually all wanted. And, uh, look, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And I think um, it'll be just a case of seeing who comes in as his backroom staff. I think there's obviously going to be rumours around who's coming in if Thomas Buffel comes in as assistant, etc. So, no, absolutely over the moon. And, uh, yeah, that Belgian chocolate was lovely. Yeah. Well, about two hours ago, we got uh, news from, it was actually Talk Sport, I think, that, that broke it, the the, the first uh, news that, about it. And then about an hour ago, I think it was, Rangers Football Club is today delighted to confirm the appointment of Philip Clement as the uh, Club's new men's first team manager. Clement, 49, arrives at Ibrox with a wealth of experience as a player and a coach, as well as track record of winning league titles. A winner as a player with Henk and Club Bruges, he was capped 38 times by Belgium and appeared in all their matches at the 1998 World Cup and was part of their Euro 2000 squad. Clement also has experience of British football after a stint with Coventry City. His move into management has seen him accumulate major honours, winning the Belgian Pro League three years in a row, firstly with Henk and then twice with Club Bruges from 2019 to 2021. He has several years of Champions League group stage experience with Club Bruges, including two campaigns which saw his side enter the Europa League knockout stages. A spell with Monaco followed after joining the League of One side, ranked ninth in the league, he led them to a top three finish in his first season in charge. Clement now arrives in Glasgow to begin a three and a half year contract as the 19th manager of Rangers FC, subject to receipt of a work permit. Speaking upon his appointment, Clement said, I am honoured to have been appointed as a new manager of Rangers Football Club and I'd like to thank the board for giving me this opportunity. I am hugely excited by his, this chance to achieve success as one of Europe's most iconic clubs across four competitions in what remains of this season and beyond. I am looking forward to meeting with the players in the coming days and to meeting our supporters at next Saturday's home match with Hibernian. As we set out together to create a set successful winning Rangers, <coughs> excuse me, his appointment comes at the end of a carefully planned comprehensive recruitment process. A team led by our CEO, James Bygrove, I know Dave, Dave uh, Pollock wants me to say Bisgrove, but I can't get Bygrove out of my head, so sorry about that. Um, members of the board and former Rangers player and manager Graham Souness has spent the last 10 days interviewing several high-caliber candidates with those individuals undergoing a rigorous interview and vetting pro process. We thank all candidates for their interest in the position. Felipe has proved to be the outstanding candidate across the three key criteria, reinforced by his track record of winning titles, and I wish him every success as he leads us forward. The new management team will meet the men's first team squad for the first time Monday as a new era begins at Rangers. Sorry, a bit of a long read there. Shona, uh, what can we expect in the next, the coming days, really? 
do think we'll, we'll, he'll be putting his stamp on the, the team right away? Yeah, I think he will. I think uh, he'll try and get his back from staff in, whether I said that will be Thomas Buffel in the race. I think it's imperative that we also get a director of football. I see that Paul Mitchell has now been linked with the, the Brighton job. So it looks like the, the head of recruitment from Brighton called Sam Jewell. Um, I think um, his dad was a former footballer. He's got really good links. Um, if we can get him across and then get Sima on a permanent deal, I think that would be great. But no, I think as far as I'm concerned, I think he'll come in. We'll try and rubber stamp and see what he needs to get for uh, in the next week. I think he's got full week more or less to play with the players that he's got apart from those out on international duty. So look at just a case of obviously him trying to implement his style so far, get the players on board. I think he's quite a good man manager as well. So look I think we're going to see a few surprises in the future, but not right now. I don't think the like the captaincy for James Tavernier will be taken off and right this second, but that might be something that you might want to look at maybe towards January or or just suss out these players and find out because this guy's got no affiliation. Well, a lot of these players, I know obviously he's worked with the likes of Dessers and uh, I think Matondo was obviously over in, in Belgium at the time. He's obviously got close links with the Belgium squad, so that includes Raskin. So, look, for me, I think it'll be a case of just him coming in, trying to get to know the players. As I said, I think he likes to get to know them on a personal basis. He's that kind of manager. So, um, no, I'm really looking forward to it. I just want to see what this kind of style of play he's got. Some people are saying that he'll do a 4-3-3. Others are saying a 4-4-2. So, it's going to be interesting to see if he can get a tune out of Dessers. And if he manages to get a tune out of Dessers, I think every Rangers fan will be, uh, by the end of the, the, what do you call it, the season, will be thinking he's an absolute hero. So, uh, no, look, I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing what he can do in the next week. I think it's just great that we've got somebody in for that Monday morning training. I think this has been dragging on a wee bit. I don't really know how much more else there was in discussions because I think these discussions have been going on for the best part of a week. So, no, I'm really looking forward to it. And, uh, yeah, like uh, like I said, um, I think he'll just try to rubber stamp his kind of style in the next couple of seven days. And really looking forward to the Hibs game now. I think um, it's given up on our left. And what I want to see now from the fans is no negativity. I think we need to move on now. I think it's got to be very positive. We've got to back this new manager. He's here for a, a two-and-a-half-year deal, a three-and-a-half-year deal, one of the two. Three-and-a-half so, years. Um, Three-and-a-half years. So, look, like, at the end of the day, people were saying about wanting him on a rolling contract. Look, I think the, this guy has been linked with a few clubs. He was linked with Saudi. There was a massive bid that came in from Saudi. The fact that he knocked that back in another club in Belgium just shows you, do you know what I mean, that there must have been something within the, the paperwork and the, with his time obviously coming to Rangers that he obviously felt this was the right time for him to come in. So I actually think, to be honest, guys, and I know that this is early doors and we haven't seen him play yet, but we could have a right gem in our hands here. If we can get this guy on, over the line and maybe the likes of this Sam Jewell and maybe get Seema on a permanent contract. I think that would be a good stead in the January transfer window. But uh, this guy's been linked with Premier League clubs in the past. And if he does well with us, look, obviously, I think he will get his, his big move down to the Premier League. So, uh, no, I'm really looking forward to this. Um, and I hope everybody else is in the chat. Any questions, guys, just give it, fire them over to us, any comments. But, uh, no, David, really looking forward to this one. I think... Uh, the last couple of weeks, David, I've been taking some amount of pelters for this uh, back in Clermont. So it's about time that I now get my own back. I think uh, the gifts galore will be surely enough in the group chat and uh, yeah, all over Twitter. So, yeah, no, happy with this one. Uh, I did say on, what was it, Friday or Thursday, it would be announced in the next 48, 48 hours. Well, I was 24 hours out. So that doesn't make a big, di big difference. But, no, I'm glad that this one's over line. Well, I was actually, I thought the longer it went on, the, the more chance Musket would have had because he played, it's just finished actually, uh, uh, in, a, in a League Cup, Japanese League Cup the today. I know they were 2-0 up at one point, but I don't know what the end result was. I didn't stay to watch the end. Um, he's only got, a, he's played three, as a manager, 302 games, and he's only got a 52.98 win record. Is that not something that worries you? At Rangers, you would be expecting more. No, no, not particularly. I think at the end of the day, the clubs he's, he's, he's managed, they are big clubs, do you know what I mean? And they are competitive leagues, so he has got that experience behind him. Um, I think when he took club game, do you know what I mean? They had never, never won a title before. He obviously took them into the Champions League and won their first first league title. He then went on back to back with the club Bruges. So, no, these these clubs are in a very, very competitive league. Um, I would say the Belgian league is probably a bit more similar to our league than obviously the Japan and the, the Australian league. So, 
Um, he's obviously worked with players out there. I know that we've obviously hit the Belgian market plenty of times around that 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 kind of those kind of clubs. So he obviously knows the Belgian market quite well if he wants to pick up anybody there. But I think for me, it probably just came down to experience, David. I think this guy's won a lot more trophies. I think um, he's a bit more well known than Muscat. Like I said in the past, I don't think we would be linked with Muscat unless it was for the the and links. And maybe obviously to do with Rangers, but before that, I don't even think we would have had an, a, a sniff at Muscat. Um, I think this guy has got a far better CV than what Muscat has uh, it's got to offer. So, no, look, I think um, his man management skills also really, really attract me. I think the, like, the fact that he sets up, he's like the Bielsa of, uh, of Scottish football, I think, what he's going to come in. I think he's going to look at the, the teams um, well before uh, we play them and he'll set up how to beat these teams. And like I said, I think what he tries to do is he, tr he tries to use different formations, different plans within a game to set up to beat, beat that team and show their, what the, the other team's weaknesses are. So, you know, for me, I think uh, this is a really, really good stead. I just hope that the players get on board now. I think that the fact that he's got no affiliation with these players as well means the fact that uh, the jury is out in a lot of these guys. So well, it means then that now these guys do not know who this guy is that's coming in and he's got no affiliation to them. So he can kind of start off with them. Um, a brand new, um, brand new clean sheet sort of thing, and uh, make sure from there that he looks at these players, eyes them up, sees them eye to eye, and it's up to the players now. If they want to play for Glasgow Rangers and they want to show and they want to win league titles, then they'll obviously have to go up to his level. And if they're not capable of doing that, David, then they know where the door is. So, um, no, I'm really, really looking forward to. It. I think the the new players will probably have a bit more of a clean slate. They're just not that that long in the door, but it's the more experienced, the core players that I've been mentioning in the past. Their mentality now. That's out, uh, that's out the question, it's out the window. So um, look, we'll wait and see what happens on uh, on Saturday against Hibs. But no, I'm really looking forward to this guy coming in. So no, I don't think the win percentage really matters a, a draw. I think at the end of the day, it doesn't matter for me. Um, people keep on going on about the style of football that Muscat plays. Of course, you want to see a style of football. But for me, as a Rangers fan, all you want to see is your team winning week in, week out and bringing trophies to that trophy cabinet. And if he can do that, then that's a winner for me all day long, and I'll be happy with that. Yeah, well, you mentioned his, his back, uh, back room team. I haven't heard anything at the moment. You mentioned Thomas Buffo there. Do you think there's any place for Stephen Davis in the in the, the back room team, or do you think he'll just be put down, put back into... I think he wants to play football, really, to be honest. Yeah, I think Stephen Davis will probably want to come back and play his last game for Rangers, whether that means putting him in, in on January or whatever when he gets back to his, his rehab and his fitness back. But for me, I think this is probably just a wee bit too soon for Stephen Davis to be going up to the first team. I think what he needs to do, if he still wants to be playing football, he carries on continuing doing that um, and getting his coaching badges. And I see somewhere for Stephen Davis, maybe, maybe like within the, the youth ranks, maybe working with David McCallum in the, youth, in the youth team and then working himself up. But it's definitely something that we need to get back to, David, as a, as a structure within this football club. Like I've been saying, and we need a director of football, and we just need a bit more structure. And what we need to do is we need to start promoting within, so that if we can, if we come back to this kind of situation in a year or two years' time, we're we're far more better prepared for it than bringing in the likes of Stephen Davis, Alex Ray, and Stephen Smith. But yeah, I definitely think that there'll be somebody. I think a Rangers man within there, whether that's Thomas Buffel, which I think with the rumours going around, it looks like quite highly the case. So. Um, would I be happy with Clement and Buffel in the in the first in the first coaching staff, the first team coaching staff? Absolutely. Um, I think uh, the, the fact that they both worked before, but I think it's imperative now that the board definitely get a director of football in this week, start getting that ball rolling. Because at the end of the day, I think we'll just have far too much to do. We need somebody that, as I said, a line of structure that's somebody that can take on that responsibility of the uh, head of recruitment and everything else that goes on in the back room. I think they also deal with contracts the youth team, the women's team especially. So, no, um, for me, it'll be interesting to see who he brings in. I would imagine a lot of the guys that he will be bringing in, we don't really know much of, but like that's something that we're just going to have have to look forward to. I think it's a bit of freshness now, David, I don't know about yourself, that we've got somebody that's that's different, we don't know anything about them. Um, and now it's up to him now, it's up to come on now to show us what he can bring to this squad, I think. And the likes of Beal and Hugh in the past, we kind of knew they were Rangers men, what they were going to bring. But this one, we just don't really know much about them. So, uh, no, look, uh, really looking forward to it. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens on Saturday. And I think the most interesting thing about Saturday is 
who's going to be in the lineup? That's the thing. Who is going to be in that lineup for Saturday? Will he start with Dacers? As I say, and work with him before. Um, obviously, no one's Matondo and Raskin. So yeah, um, it'll be interesting. Well, I, I think Dacers, <laughs> if they does use him, I think Dacers would be far better than a four four two. I don't think he's. Uh, he's fast enough or good enough to put to play the lone striker. Uh, if you're going to play the lone striker, then it, for me, Des is not your man. We need to be Danilo if it, if he's fit. I, I don't know where. From what I've heard, he can play with a face mask. So, and I know that, that McGregor from the other side, from the dark side, he was um, he played for for months with a with a face mask on. So hopefully he'll come back. To be honest with you, I was totally against the director of football until. I've now seen what Bill, what a, what a, a mess he made of it. So I'm, I'm, I'm totally with you now on director of football. There needs to be one that comes in and as quick as possible. It would have actually been better if they brought him in before they, they went to look for a manager. But obviously that, that couldn't have been. So we are going to be doing a full pod tonight at 8.30. This is just a quick news break. Uh, I think myself and Shona are on tonight, so with Colin and one other, not sure who that will be. So I'm going to leave it at that tonight, uh, till tonight. Otherwise, we'll be going over stuff that you'll you'll be hearing tonight. So I'm going to say, give give Shona the chance to say goodbye and what you think of the the the, the, the coming day. I'm, what I, what I really want to say. See, the first thing I would do, Shona. Is put them down and watch that rugby game from last night, the I- Ireland against the All Blacks, and say to the players, that is a heart and passion I want to see you bringing on to the Rangers football field because it was absolutely magnificent. I'm, I'm not really into rugby that much, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed that last night. So, Shauna, on you go. Well, guys, as I've been saying for a few weeks now, we've now got Philippe Clement on board. Let's all jump on the, the same bandwagon and, uh, well, sorry, I've got a, a frog stuck in my throat. But, uh, no, looking forward to talking about it, more about it tonight and gloating um, with uh, the likes of uh, Scott and Curry. So, looking forward to that, David. But, sorry, I've got a frog in my throat. <coughs> okay, with that, I will finish up. Thanks for listening, guys, and we will see you tonight, 8.30 British time. Thank you very much. Bye.